You too, what's good? What's going on with you? It's your girl Simba, and it is time for another reaction. Okay, we're supposed to check out 15 most deadliest animals that are extinct for good. Good, good because some of these animals back in the day was wild and they was ridiculously huge. I think somebody told me like horses were like really big and then like some centipedes were huge and scorpions were huge we just don't need that right now you know what i'm saying but we finna get into this before we do that smash the like button subscribe if you haven't already also turn on the notifications so you don't miss any future uploads and then after that come over to the twitch and come vibe with the dark side let's get it let's get it let's do it let's check this out Ugh. oh wait 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 I keep doing that. I keep forgetting to unmute this uh, thing. All right. Prehistoric animals roamed our planet millions of years ago, and certain animals were simply terrifying. Have you ever heard of the Smilodon? Smilodon? What about the boa? If you like scary looking creatures, you're at the right place as we count down 15 most deadly animals that are extinct for good. Smilodon? Oh, yo. This is such a W movie, by the way. This is such a, a, a yo, this movie was good, okay? Number 15, Hallucigenia fortis. This odd species that was discovered about 500 million years ago and has bewildered scientists since has finally been shown to have teeth, bringing it front and center in the evolution of numerous complex life forms that now populate the earth. Hallucigenia fortis was not only armed with spines for protection, but also with teeth in its mouth, simple eyes, and teeth inside its gullet, which would aid in digestion. Because its lobopodian limbs and small claws and were rather weak, Hallucigenia is believed to have crawled across sponges while shielding itself from predators with its long dorsal spines. Uh. Although Hallucigenia seems weird, it's not an unintelligible zoological experience. So like, what did it do? It feels like, I feel like if you got bit, you know what I'm saying, it would make you hallucinate. Halluc Hallucinate, y'all know symbol with centipedes. Relax, bro. Everybody knows I'm I'm I have a, a phobia of centipedes, and I will literally perish on a whim. Okay, but it looked like a virus. In fact, it looked like Corona. Paleontologists have established it as the point in the evolutionary tree where a group of modern invertebrates called velvet worms branched off. Velvet worms. Number fourteen. Ew. Mega Nera. One of the largest known flying insects, Meganeura, was discovered in France in 1880. Meganeura and other griffin flies like it are generally referred to as dragonflies, despite their superficial resemblance to dragonflies. Most people believe that an So is it bigger than a fucking dra a dragonfly? Because I ain't gonna lie, when I be when I be like seeing a dragonfly like hover and like do all this like extra sh I I don't really like I don't really like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't really like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I know it can't really hurt me, but like, if it's bigger than a dragonfly, literally, literally I'm, a sh I, 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 I don't like dragonflies. Good thing you don't live in Arizona, bro. Y'all got, <laughs> thank you for telling me I will never visit Arizona. Thank you so much. Cause psh, that is, it's as big as your toe. Boy, don't tell me that. Insects Don't growth can be limited by the amount of oxygen available for respiration. Even though our current atmosphere contains only about 21% oxygen, Look how the Carboniferous period saw oxygen concentrations of up to 35% in the atmosphere. As a matter of fact, tracheal tubes in insects like Meganeera delivered oxygen directly to their internal organs. Meganeera would not have to exert any effort for those tissues to grow larger due to the increased oxygen in the atmosphere. If oxygen levels fell below a certain level, the giant insects would either have to evolve smaller forms or be wiped out entirely. Oh, Dragonflies today that's why they got smaller. Okay, so there was less oxygen concentrated on Earth. So Thank they, you for oh, the prawn. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate you, gang. You know what I'm saying? Welcome. Uh, Jada Nerd was popping. Um, so, okay, that makes sense. They but I still don't fuck with dragonflies, though. But Mega Nera's size suggests it could have eaten far more prey than dragonflies do today. Small amphibians, as well as other invertebrates, may have been prey, as they were transitioning from aquatic to terrestrial life at a rapid pace. What? 
Number 13, Smilodon. Oh, that's the like Smilodon, the big also tooth. Known as uh, that's a saber tooth uh, tiger, right? This is where I leave. I hate insects. T, you better not go nowhere. Um, This is like, uh, nah, nature got it. Bro, on God, this is, um, hey, we're watching something where all these mofos is extinct, okay? So we don't, hey, hey, we just, we just thumbsing up Mother Nature. I'm glad she nerfed some of these builds because this is crazy. Sabretooth, I remember Ice Age, right? As the Sabretooth Tiger was a fearsome hunter thousands of years ago. Boy. The Sabretooth was a sight to behold, with enormous fangs protruding from its muzzle. That's fucking crazy. Tarpets were a common and deadly part of the landscape 10,000 years ago. Tigers is already crazy. Animals became stranded and died after sinking into the concrete. Over a million bones Apparently, they were a lot bigger than regular tigers. They were a lot bigger. So, you know what I'm saying? Mother Nature did her nerf. You know, saying made them a little bit smaller. It was like, mm, the, maybe these teeth don't need to be this big. You know what I'm saying? I'm, uh, bro, because listen. Discovered in the La Brea Tar listen. Pits in California. This includes one of the world's largest and best preserved saber tooth bone collections. Golly. Scientists may piece together the natural history of the region, including the history of the saber tooth cat, using data collected from the La Brea Tar Pits. The saber-toothed cat first appeared in the fossil record two million years ago, according to scientists. Two million? Golly! Saber-toothed cats are like modern cats and can be found all over North and South America. However, there are no living descendants of the saber-toothed cat today. But Look scientists at how are working on a way were. to reintroduce the big cats. If Wait, what the fuck did they say? What did he just say? Can be found all over North and South America. However, there are no living descendants of the saber-toothed cat. Okay, there's no living descendants. And then what did you say after that? Today. But scientists are working on a way to reintroduce the big cats. Scientists are working on a way to reintroduce the big cats. Ain't no way he just said that. Exactly. Why? And Mother Nature did her job to nerf these motherfuckers for a reason. See, this is what this is the problem. You be putting your nose places. Okay, we dig up the fossils. Cool. You know, this is what survived back then. Don't try to bring these motherfuckers back. They gone for a reason. For a reason. We already fighting for our motherfucking lives against these other animals that's out here. Why would you bring back something stronger than these niggas? Like, what, 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 do, you, what do you want? Hello? Hello? If they succeed... The saber tooth will once again rule the world's lands. If they Number 12. If they succeed, the saber tooth will rule the earth's lands. Do you understand what just came out of his mouth? So why would you do this? Dunkleosteus. Mm, what? While the other apex predators were that just evolving at the boy. time, Dunkleosteus had already emerged, making it the very first top level predator on earth. How is it possible for it to do this? A large beast with massive jaws is to blame. The jaws, composed of tiny bones, were given fish. fangs and long cutting edges. The upper and lower jaws would crash into one another, and the self-sharpening process would begin. The mouth of Dunkleosteus could open and close so swiftly, it was able to create a suction effect when opening its jaws, thus oh, drawing shit. prey into its maw. Second, the teeth were also quite powerful, having the strength of huge crocodiles. Even animals with body armor, like other placiderms, had no hope of survival against Dunkleosteus. Um, excuse me? That's what this thing looked like? Excuse me? What is y'all? Oh, no. So foof. Animals with body armor, like other placiderms, had no hope of survival against Dunkleosteus, who could catch and consume everything with the shell. From the ammonites to others like the Look plated fish. Look at its fit. teeth. Who could catch and consume everything with the shell for the nigga got six nah eight just big ass fucking that's crazy eight a big ass teeth is crazy who could catch and consume everything with the shell that shit has eight just eight big ass fucking teeth bro eight that is blasphemy oh my god man from the ammonites to others like the plated fish. Another investigation by paleontologists showed that scratches and abrasions on the armor of another Dunkleosteus, which were most likely caused by a larger Dunkleosteus. They could have eaten each other for all we know. Number 11, Titanochorus Genesi. 
Scientists huh? have discovered a new species of sea creature that measured one and a half feet long and had a large shell over its head and a tooth mouth. It also had a pair of spiny claws it used to stab its prey. No need to worry about one of these brushing up against your leg at the beach because it has been extinct. It's possible that the Titanochorus was a gigantic creature during a time when most sea creatures were smaller than the size of a pinky finger, according to scientists who discovered the fossil in Kutenya National Park in Canadian Rockies. What it's impossible fuck? to comprehend the sheer size of this creature. This is one of the largest Cambrian era vertebrates ever discovered. One of several primitive arthropod groups called herticoids fuck? that have long heads and three part outer shells. Titanochorus is one of the most well known members of this group. These animals are little more than swimming heads because their heads are so long compared to their bodies. The Titanochorus's flat head suggests it hunted by using its front limbs to scoop up prey and bring it to its mouth. Number 10. Platybelodon. What? Since it shares the same name as its. Hey, 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 hey. What the fuck is this? Is this a platypus elephant, nigga? I'm done. I'm done. I'm so. Bro. Ain't no way this is something that's out that was. Yo, bro, please keep. Keep. Oh, God. Keep this bitch dead. What the fuck is that? Look at it. Pretend. What the fuck is that? Hello? Platy Belladon. Since it shares. This is crazy. The same name as its cousin, Amabelladon, you can be sure that Platybelodon was related to it. During the late Miocene era, about 10 million years ago, Elephants in Africa and Eurasia used their flattened lower tusks to dig up vegetation along flooded plains, lake beds, and riverbanks. Amabelodon's fused silverware, on the other hand, had a concave, serrated surface riverbanks. Amabelodon. Nigga said that looked like my auntie. <laughs> You dead wrong. You dead. <laughs> nah, you dead wrong for that. Nah, this jaw is crazy. What the fuck? Eladon's fused silverware, on the other hand, had a concave, serrated surface that resembled a modern spork, measuring about two or three feet long and Look a at foot his wide. Teeth down there. This prehistoric proboscis certainly had a pronounced underbite because of this. Recently, new research has cast doubts on the idea that Platybelodon used its lower tusk to scoop up hundreds of pounds of vegetation by digging into the muck with this appendage. What the fuck? These look like platypus anteater elephants. Oh god, auntie catching strays. <laughs> auntie catching un unprovoked strays. Damn. So like... Can they use it as a tusk? Cause you know, they use the elephant tusk, they use the tusk and they grab shit. But I'm assuming if it's stagnant, can they use the top part as a tusk? Or is it like a jaw? That's crazy. That is crazy. Double lower tusks of platybelodon are denser and robustly built. Oh, so it this you see how this bent just now? This bent upwards. So maybe they can still use the top part as a tusk, but it can't go past the jaw. And then like you use that's crazy. Yeah, that's that needed a nerf. Good Bill lord. Then would be required for the simple task. An alternative theory is that this elephant grasped the branches of trees with its trunk, then swung its massive head back and forth to scythe down the tough plants beneath, or even strip and consume bark. Number nine, Anomalocarus. Keep it dead on God. Assume the oceans 530 million years ago were teeming with creatures that we don't recognize today. At the time, Anomalocarus, or unusual okay, shrimp in Greek, was the most important predator in the ancient seas. Bro, that's an alien Cambrian chat. era fossils found in Canada's Burgess Shale and other locations around the world I'm show telling that this you, bro, large shrimp- We out here trying to find aliens out in fucking space and they in the ocean, bro. They in the fucking ocean. There's no reason something like this should have been alive in the water in the first place. That's just crazy. They in the ocean, bro. Shrimp was common I'm during the Cambrian you. period. 
there's only one species of unusual shrimp in British I'm... shale fossil record that is larger than what six the feet long. Fuck? Anomalocaris mode of movement and predatory behavior have been aided by the study of fossil body parts and entire specimens. Having compound eyes with thousands of lenses, Anomalocaris was able to see extremely clearly. It was able to swim quickly because of its undulating swimming motion. The creature's front limbs were equipped with sharp spikes on each segment, allowing Ew, it to grab boy, its that looked like a booty hole. Hey, <laughs> watch mouth look like a booty hole, boy. Good lord. Nah, son. Mm -mm. I'm glad all of these things is ex like. Why is it like? Hey, once it had look at it, to it. Look, nah, that's crazy. Nigga said, "Bring me that animal." That's. Go ahead, go ahead, put something in. Put, put, put your hand in there. I just want to see what's gonna happen. It would have been a fearsome predator if it had been this combination of keen eyesight, it's a shrimp. quickness, and spiky It don't forearms. fucking look shrimpy. With its 32 overlapping plates, the Anomalocaris' mouth could crush its prey. No, nah, that's OP. That's OP. Did you see? Look at how it grabs it, bro. Nigga, like, he reaches his hands out and says, yeah. You know, like, the, it's it's whatever the fuck that is. I, I, I said hands, but I don't, like, it, it like, it, like, bruh. Oh, no. Nah. With its 32 overlapping plates, it, it. the Anomalocaris' nah, mouth could crush its prey. What the fuck? It is possible the teeth and mouth of the Anomalocaris were too soft to break through the thick trilobite armor, but the fossil plates and tips show no sign of wear and tear. That's this crazy. This debate demonstrates determining what animals were doing some 500 million years ago is a difficult task. Modern arthropods such as crabs and lobsters are distantly related to Anomalocaris. Crabs and lobsters? It was extinct mm. at the end of the Cambrian extinction events. The Great Permian Extinction wiped out 90% of life on the planet at the time. Number 8. Megalania. Oh yeah, we heard Megalania about this one. Megalania was a giant monitor lizard that yeah, lived in Australia lizard, during yeah. the Pleistocene era and was a member of that. the megafaunal assemblage. I remember that. With an estimated length of 11.5 oh, to 23 feet. 23 feet?! Mother Nature, thank you. 23 feet. That's probably what they were calling Godzilla for real, because 23 feet is crazy. 11 feet is crazy. It said between 11 to 23. 11 feet is crazy. 23 feet is crazy. What? A weight of 214 to 4,277 pounds. That's a grown ass. It is the ass. largest known terrestrial lizard. Though the wow. fragmentary nature of known remains make estimates highly uncertain. Megalania, like the Komodo dragon, is thought to have lived in a similar habitat. In Australia, the oldest fossilized remains of giant monitor lizards date back to about 50,000 years ago. Fit Megalania's wow. extinction may have been caused by the first indigenous settlers of Australia, who may have come across them. As far as scientists know, Megalania was the largest terrestrial lizard ever. By wow. comparison, it would have eaten mainly medium and large-sized animals, such as giant marsupials like Diperchodon, along with other reptiles and small mammals. It would also have eaten birds and their eggs or chicks. Wow. Serrated blade-like teeth filled its jaws and its large skull, had a small crest between the eyes. Some scientists are skeptical of the claim that Megalania was the only or even primary predator of the Australian Pleistocene megafauna, as some have suggested. Megalania has not been linked to the slaughter of large Pleistocene mammals, while the marsupial lion has. That's crazy. Toxicophera, a proposed clade that includes all known reptile clades with toxin secreting oral glands and their close venomous and non venomous relatives, including iguana, anguimorpha, and snakes, includes Megalania and the Komodo dragon. Number 7. Dinosuchus. Studies of It's pretty much a dinosaur version of a fucking alligator. Sucus brain case suggests it was more closely related you to said my five nine process. self is getting rocked. Listen, I am getting pieced the fuck up by that lizard, bro. Getting pieced up by that lizard, bro. Pieced up, you know what I'm saying? W gifted sub. Hello? Why is sub like that? Thank you for the gift. You know what I mean? Why does sound like that? Why does sound like Alright, let me stop. Stop. Crocodiles. I'm sorry. The name Terrible Crocodile refers to this creature. 
They could be found on either side yeah. of the western Alligator interior crocodile, seaway. Whatever. An ancient landwater divide that separated North America during the Cretaceous period. Crazy. As a top predator in this ocean, Dinosuchus could have easily outcompeted any other carnivore. But it was a large and agile apex predator, which meant it could take advantage of any opportunity to prey on prey. Damn. Western Dinosuchus populations grew to their largest size, but eastern populations were far more prevalent. Dinosuchus may have been able to take down and eat large dinosaurs according to the evidence. It could also have eaten turtles, fish, and other aquatic and terrestrial prey. During the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction events, Dinosuchus was wiped out. A length of 49 feet has been estimated by experts over the years. Ah, what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? 49? 49? 49? 49? 49? Is that what that's what is that what I heard? Kiss was wiped out. A length of 49 feet. Oh my god. Oh my god. That dead as hell. No knees. Gone. Hope we got life insurance. It don't even matter at that point. D bro, there's no zigzapping away, bro. There's no finessing this big motherfucker. That's crazy, bro. That is fucking. Oh my god, you protecting us, nigga? I, I dead as hell. I'll be dead as hell. It has been estimated by experts over the years, despite a wide range of estimates. Number six. Jesus. Helicoprion. What? Helicoprion is one of the strangest sharks in the f For what? For fucking what? For what? For what? Helicoprion. For this nigga got a buzz saw as a fucking jaw? For what? What in the hell? Yeah. B Balaug 22 just donated $1. MF eating good tonight. Yes, it's gonna day at night. Ugh, that was sounding horrible. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for the dollar, gang. Bro, this, this is crazy. Appreciate the dollar. This is crazy. L tongue, L jaw. This is. Nigga got a buzz saw as a fucking jaw. Helicoprion is one of the strangest sharks in the fossil record. Although at the time that the Helicoprion swam the oceans, there were many sharks that did not conform to the standard form we know today. Most of the remains of the shark are the teeth, which are fossilized in a spiral pattern like the Yo, I ain't gonna lie, God was making anything. <laughs> Yo, you see that shit right there? Put a bus on that bitch. Yeah, that shit gonna be a murderer. Damn. Yo, that's a... Yo, make that shit up to like... make Yo, make that shit like 49 feet long, gangy. Yo, you know what would be cool? If this nigga had, like, a uh, mouth antenna and it could just scoop shit up. You know, like, bro, what the fuck was you doing? <laughs> what, what, what was you doing? What was you doing? What was you doing? This nigga was creating anything, boy. Shit, like, huh? Imagine if that shit spun. Bruh. Shell of an ammonite. In fact... When first discovered, these fossils were thought to be exotic ammonite shells. These arrangements of fossil teeth are today referred to as a tooth whorl. The helicoprion was as scary, if not scarier, than the megalodon. They would grab prey that would fit in the back of their mouth, right next to the back joint of the jaw. Located at the back of the jaw, the teeth were saw-like, with the jaw creating a rolling back and slicing mechanism. The helicoprion also likely ate soft tissue prey such as squid, rather than hunting creatures with hard shells. Number five, wow. Titanoboa. Deep in the South American jungle, oh, we an knew about snake this. Once you know what I'm saying? We watched Anaconda. We knew about this. Prey. After slinking closer and closer to an unsuspecting animal, the silent hunter would strike in a flash and snap its victim. Okay, back so literally, quick qu question though, because like a snake is literally only has a this snake snake. Wait, snakes are all muscle, aren't they? Right? I think they got like a um, a bone in their head, but that's about it, right? 
I don't think there's I don't think there's no bones in their body. They got maybe got a bone in their head, but that's it. So how can you possibly if these shits were like as big as they were? Hey, this be bola. Thank you for the 300 bits, gangy. But like, okay, so boom. Say these were in the past, in the past, right? You find fossils. They got bones. Do they really? Do they really? Clearly, I wasn't the. Uh, what? Snakes do indeed have bones. In fact, they have hundreds. Oh. Oh, wow. Wow. <gasps> no, no, no. I fucked up. I fucked up. Uh. Wow. Didn't know that. Cause I was I was I was gonna ask, like, how the fuck did they know how big they were if they didn't have bones? I didn't I thought I knew they had like a bone in their head. Do snakes fart? Yo, that's <laughs> Hey, somebody out here wondering, like, hey, this nigga stink. Did he just fart? Let me look this up. <laughs> but now nah, I was really about to like cause I'm like, how the fuck they know how big it get if like there wasn't bones to fossilize? You see what I'm saying? I thought it was just one big ass muscle, but I guess not. You know, it's something new every day. I've Titanoboa. Deep in the South American jungle, an enormous snake once stalked its prey. After slinking closer and closer to an unsuspecting animal, the silent hunter would strike in a flash and snap its victim neck in one swift move. Mm. Its prey didn't even hear the Titanoboa coming amid the cacophony of the prehistoric jungle 60 million years ago. No animal had a chance. <laughs> Titanoboa, the enormous serpent of legend, thrived in the tropical jungles of South America some 5 million years after the extinction of dinosaurs. Mm. The death of the giant reptiles left a vacuum five at the top of the Five million years after the extinction of dinosaurs, these niggas were still hunting. Food chain, and Titanoboa gladly stepped up. This prehistoric species grew up to 50 feet and weighed as much as 2,500 pounds. 50? That's as long as a semi-trailer you see on highways, and about twice as heavy as a polar bear. At its thickest point, Titanoboa was 3 feet wide, which is longer than a human arm. In the tropical jungle, Titanoboa with its brown skin camouflaged fit perfectly as it sunk through muddy waters. Some scientists think it killed by constricting and asphyxiating its prey. The great snake swallowed its giant prey whole, and if you had the terrifying experience of staring into Titanoboa's mouth, you would be no exception. It could kill you before you movie, even screamed. It's pretty much the movie Anaconda, bro. Niggas, yeah, that's what that's what it is. The movie Anaconda, they was like they they thought these shits was it's it's instinct like instinct extinct, but nah. Even among the massive creatures of the ancient rainforest, Titanoboa was king. It was the apex predator of its era, God a damn. creature as unquestionably the ruler of its environment as the Tyrannosaurus Rex was at its own time. Golly. Number four, Forest Racity. What the fuck? Even if you found it difficult to accept that pigeons descended from dinosaurs, you'd be forgiven. This animal is, after all, descended from some well, of the best like killers bird. nature has ever created. And now it's in the sewers drinking the filth of the gutters and robbing pensioners for the crust. But That's before crazy. they were begging for food in parks, millions of years ago, they were at the top of the food chain. They had succeeded in replacing their dangerous predecessors, the fearsome theropods like Velociraptor. Force Racidae, also known as terror birds, are the sort of animals that can push their gigantic, hooked beaks through small mammals with no effort. The 18 known species of colossal that dinosaurs were 10 ass, feet boy. tall and weren't flying. Look so at they took up the <laughs> Look at this, the amount of concern on this damn little lion's face, bro. The known species of colossal dinosaurs grew to 10 feet tall and weren't flying. Look, look, look. That lion, that little lion is scared for its life. Look, look, look. So they took up the chase after the prey. <laughs> who just celebrated their escape from the giant predatory dinosaurs. The poor things woke up from a hangover, only to discover the terror bird was also suffering from a bad headache. Although South America was still an island in the southern hemisphere, it was separated from the northern half, and was so became a place where the terror birds gained dominance in the absence of other fearsome predators. Hmm. Even with their triumphs, their fossils are only found in fragments and are quite rare. The Tehuelche, a Patagonian indigenous people, called the giant dreadbird after the bird spirit Kelenken. 
It's the largest known bird school in existence. Its beak is so large, it's more than two feet long, with a massive eagle-like hook at the end. These fossils imply that terror birds were nothing like the delicate pigeons of today, wow, as well as not being contemporary long? equivalents of today's bread lovers. A single blow from this mammoth skull and a beak might have inflicted tremendous harm. Jeez. Because they lived in forests, terror birds hunted tiny mammals, which flourished after the dinosaur's extinction. However, biomechanical investigations have indicated their skulls and beaks were likely not powerful enough to attack larger animals. Their extremely powerful legs would have allowed them to pursue scampering prey. They were formidable and speedy, capable of speeds of 30 miles per hour or more. Those who have seen ostriches gallop like enormous 40 mile per hour feather dusters with panic attacks would not be surprised by this. The monsters would first open their beaks, then stand on their prey if and quickly these, bro, shove it facts, to death. If these can fucking Perhaps fly, they even snap their victims' over. spines by biting them and shaking them. Golly, what the fuck Number are you a three, Pentacopterus decorahensis. What in the fuck is this? An aquatic arthropod. What, what? Who is naming these? Who's naming these? What in the fuck? Okay. Known as Pentacopteris decorahensis is the oldest known sea scorpion species, which is related to the. They. P they planning for world domination on some shii. On oh, hey, listen. On oh, God. Listen, I'm glad these things is very much instincted, because boy. The spiders, lobsters, and ticks of today. Acryptorids evolved 10 million years earlier than previously thought, and this new animal's relation to other Eurypids shows that they were very diverse during Golly. this early period of their evolution, despite the fact they are rare fossils. Eurypterids, such as Pentacopterus decorahensis, must have been important predators in the early Paleozoic ecosystems because of their size and predatory that nature. That is fucking insane. In addition to its large grasping arms for trapping prey, the creature's head shield was long and narrow. Incredibly, Pentacopterus decorahensis was mind-boggling. The paddle, the leg it would use to swim, and the head were both unique. That's a lot of length for one creature. The preservation of its exoskeleton on the rock, which can be peeled off and examined under a microscope, is perhaps the most remarkable aspect of the specimen. The patterns of small hairs on the legs are just one example of the incredible level of detail. At times, it feels like you're studying a modern animal's exoskeleton which is an exciting prospect for paleontologists. Number two, Harpagornis Morai. Has to These eagle. names are fucking killing me. In Mori folklore, Bring the me Pokai that cat. Like, Zealand, listen, put that thing in some fucking butter. Put some old seasoning, old bay seasoning on that thing. Listen, you know what I'm saying? We gonna have a crab crack in this bit. You know what I'm saying? It's thought to be an extinct bird of prey known as the Hast Eagle. It is the heaviest known eagle Weighing 33 pounds compared to the 20 pounds of the harpy eagle. 33 there is a pounds? Got so large How are you because flying? of its prey. The flightless moas, which can weigh up to 510 pounds. The Hass eagle went extinct when the first Mori hunted the moa to extinction. Wow. Among true raptors, Hass eagle was one of the largest. Look at his Even claws. the largest living vultures were dwarfed by its size and weight. Hass eagles are estimated to have weighed 25 pounds for males and 33 pounds for females based on comparisons with living eagles in the Australasian region. According to one source, the largest females could have weighed more than 36 pounds. They are about 40% smaller than the largest extant bald eagles, none of which have ever been proven to weigh in at more than 20 pounds in the wild. The Hass eagle preyed on large flightless birds, including the moa, which weighed up to 15 times the eagle's weight. Wow. Because of its large beak, it was capable of tearing into its prey's internal organs, resulting in blood loss. A Hass eagle could have easily monopolized a single large kill over a period of days without the presence of other large predators or kleptoparasites. Wow, that's crazy. Number one, Arthropleura. Oh, I remember, yeah. The genus Arthropleura, ah! which was present oh, in North- Oh God, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. I can't watch it, chat. I can't. I literally, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't watch it, bro. I will. I'm literally gonna lose my shit. I. I'll. I'll let it. I'll let it. I'll let it. I. I'll let it play through for y'all, but I. I gotta.
North America and Scotland oh from 345 God. to 295 million years ago ah! was a millipede arthropod. Though some specimens were barely 0.3 meters long, specimens of A. armata reached a length of 2.5 meters. Is it almost While almost arthropleura time, had to compete with giant land vertebrates, Jesus. there was a larger spatial pressure of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere. I can't, I can't watch it. I can't watch I really lose my mind. Like, I can't. Each of the 30 joints of arthropleura was covered by two side plates and a center plate. An estimated ah, 8 to 6 ratio of body legs. segments to leg pairs was found. Oh my god. Like some of today's millipedes. The giant tropical centipede, Scolopendra, was once thought to be the giant relative of Arthropleura, which was also supposed to be a fearsome predator. Dead? The fact that Arthropleura wasn't a predator like centipedes today, but rather a herbivore like millipedes is now well established. The existence of strong and powerful mouth parts in Arthropleura was also uncertain, because no fossils of mouth I, I area have been can't found. Watch it. I'm not sure I would have wanted to live during those times, but my favorite has to be the powerful Hast Eagle. Which one was your favorite? Okay. Why don't you let us know in the comments? He's asking me what's the favorite, so I know it's over. Whew. Boy. Mm -mm. Has to be the... Mm -mm. I, I'm sorry for screaming like that. I don't know what came over me, but that shit had to go, bro. If that crab gets killed, all of my black folks are stuck. <laughs> hey, listen. Facts. Crab boil in his The powerful Hast Eagle. Which one was your favorite? That one was crazy. This one right here was below. crazy. Well, that's our countdown of 15 most deadly animals that are extinct for good. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon. Man, shout out to Fnatic, man. Fnatic be dropping bangers. But I just could not watch that last one, bro. I couldn't. Like, I, I literally scream. Like, I, I, don't even, I don't even scream, but I scream. You know what I'm saying? But now, nah, WVID, uh, shout out to them. Um, you know what I'm saying? If you enjoyed the vid, let me know. Also, smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Also, turn on the notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. And then after that, come over to the Twitch and come vibe with the dark side. Let's get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bob with the dark side. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm gone. Have a good one, man.